So here are some additional doc tests that I have created based on the suggestions that ChatGPT now made. Uh, I ran them with the uh, client and I figured out what the expected answers were. Our old thoroughness was 75%, but now with these new suggestions, we are achieving 100% thoroughness. Now, please remember that this just means that this set of doc tests is able to identify all the buggy solutions that I have in my hidden code. There may be other buggy interpretations. Here by buggy I mean not the interpretation that the client had in mind. So there could have been other interpretations that I don't have here. And so in reality, these uh, doc tests may not be fully thorough. There may be additional doc tests that you are able to think of. But since we have already hit this upper limit of 100%, we're not going to be able to get any more feedback from here. So let us go with what we have here. So once again, I ran this with ChatGPT. I gave ChatGPT the expected answers. I said, here, the doc test below clarify how the function should behave, just like I said before. Now write the code. And this time I've given it all the examples that it has suggested. And it says, oh, okay, I figured out that we are going to handle cases like reverse bounds and case sensitivity and exclusive comparison. And it promises me that it is going to produce code that satisfies all the provided doc tests. That's very useful to me. So this code apparently should work. So let's copy paste it. Again, so far we haven't used our own minds too much. But let us uh, take this code that ChatGPT has produced, copy that, and replace the code that we had that was earlier only getting us a pass of 3 out of 7. What if we now run this modified code? So this time the code uh, passes one more test. We get 4 out of 7. When we look at this code, we do see it using this line to check if A and B are out of order. It does this by first sorting the tuple AB and then unpacking that tuple into the lower bound and the upper bound. And then instead of using A and B, it uses the lower and upper bounds that it has just computed. So this seems to handle some of those cases. If you remember, one of the doc tests dealt with upper and lower case letters. I don't see any logic in here that deals with upper and lower case. And in fact, if you check the code that ChatGPT has produced against all the doc tests that we wrote, we will find that some of them fail. Now, you might say, but wait a minute, didn't ChatGPT promise me that it passes all the provided doc tests? Yes, ChatGPT did promise us, but that is incorrect. This code actually fails some of the provided doc tests and ChatGPT somehow has not figured this out. It's got this beautiful piece of code, it's given us the summary of why it believes it's going to work, but, and it even tells me, let me know if you'd like an optimized version, or perhaps you want case insensitive, maybe your client has changed their mind. But I told ChatGPT, I said, I'm sorry, your code fails. It fails this doc test. I worked out that actually the expected answer is five. That's what my doc test told me. But the code that ChatGPT gave me produces eight. And here is that example with upper and lower case. And here is another example where it failed. So actually the first doc test and this last doc test have a common error. It turns out that what the client wants is substrings but the client does not want to count duplicate substrings. So perhaps what the client should have said is they want unique substrings, but the client, who's not a programmer, didn't use that word, didn't use unique. But these examples demonstrate this. And when I tell ChatGPT that your code fails these doc tests, it quite cleverly realizes that the issue lies in duplicate substrings. So ChatGPT has figured out that the problem is duplicate substrings.
But if you're paying close attention, you notice that it forgot about this failure, which is not about duplicate substrings, but about case sensitivity or case insensitivity in this case. So it forgot that and it focused only on fixing this one issue related to duplicate substrings. So then it updated the logic. It said if I have to deal with unique substrings, uh, I can do that and ChatGPT does this by using a set data structure. As we have seen, a set data structure is very helpful when um, uh, you want to figure out only the unique items in uh, a list or any other sort of collection. So if we do this, this might actually improve matters. Let us run it. And this time we have five out of seven. So we're gradually making progress here, but ChatGPT is forgetting this one doc test that it failed. And in fact, if you try out, uh, that doc test does fail. So I tell ChatGPT, look, uh, the code still fails this doc test. Even though you promised me that your code passes all the doc tests, I have checked, uh, and so there's something you must do. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't work, so go ahead and fix the code. Right? And this time it says, oh, thanks for pointing out. And now it says, oh, I have figured out the root cause of the failing doc test. And you might say, oh great, it's figured out the root cause of the failing doc test. And it tells me some long story about how it's going to fix the code. And it corrects the code and makes a doc test compliant. But I ran this code and I promise you this code does not work. In fact, it fails the same doc test. So then I finally gave it a hint. I said, look, I think the problem is not the root cause that you're thinking of. I think comparisons need to be case insensitive. So I actually stepped in here. I used my own brain rather than just copy pasting from everywhere. And there will be such instances where you can get a lot of help from these AI generation tools, but they will fail you. So it's very important for us to develop our own minds. We must recognize the root cause of the failure. We must not trust these systems to always help us. Sometimes, of course, they're very helpful, as I have said. And with this clarification, uh, ChatGPT says, thank you. That really helps. Of course, it's always going to say thank you. And finally, it produces some different code. And this time, this code converts um, the given strings into uh, a lowercase version. It, it doesn't use the dot lower method. It actually uses a more advanced method called case fold. And if you read uh, the full solution that uh, ChatGPT has suggested here, it actually tells you that you could use either dot lower or dot case fold. And dot case fold is actually a little bit better. It's a little bit more robust. It handles all kinds of letters, including uh, uh, Unicode characters which are not part of just the English alphabet. So this is a good suggestion. Uh, of course, this may not be what the client wants, so we should check. But if we run this code, if we copy paste this code uh, onto our code check platform, if we eliminate this and paste this, then this code finally should pass all the tests and we get seven out of seven. So I ended my conversation with ChatGPT uh, by simply saying, um, thank you, this works. And ChatGPT said, that's great, uh, you're happy to help, etc. Let me know if you need to optimize this code for performance or apply it to a larger project. And of course, these are the kinds of things you probably do want to do. These are simple problems that we're working on here in this introductory course. We are learning our craft. But in general, we would want to take these functions and do something interesting with them. And that could be another challenge. And ChatGPT is offering to help us with that.